Uh, hi everyone, Last in the One Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of 2022 List Week, Top 50 Albums of the Year. You know what it is, gonna go through 50 albums. Yep, that's pretty much it, that's the plan, let's get it done. Doing it, doing it, doing it, uh, gonna go through the first half of this list relatively quickly, and then we can really dig into some of the records that, uh, we're in my top 25, because, yeah. Let's do it. At number 50, we have Jer bringing those ska vibes back with Bothered and Unbothered. A lot of just kind of upbeat bangers on this one. 49, it is Black Dresses with Forget Your Own Face. At 48, it is Blade and Echo 2K teaming up for Crest. 47, it is Backwashes. His happiness shall come first even though we are suffering. If you're looking for some heavy and in-your-face aggressive industrial hip-hop with a gothic twist, you are gonna want to hear that at number 46 it is daniel rossin with you belong there big progressive folk singer songwriter vibes coming off of that lp it's a good one some awesome creative and virtuous forward thinking death metal on the new artificial brain album the self-titled one the grindcore heads are going to want to uh, listen to number 44 that would be worm rot with hiss the band is sounding more nasty and vicious than ever on their latest full-length lp 43 it's ari lennox with age sex and location very sensual, soulful R&B concept album right there at 42. Black Thought and Danger Mouse teaming up for Cheat Codes. Definitely one of the best hip-hop LPs of the year there. And at 41, Richard Dawson with The Ruby Chord. Uh, one of the biggest and most ambitious folk and singer-songwriter records of the year. With a 41-minute song on it. With number 40, Kralis comes roaring back with a progressive and experimental black metal record that is quite harsh, quite heavy, quite in-your-face, crystalline exhaust. Austin. Then at 39, it is The Weeknd with the ever-conceptual Dawn FM. 38, Beach House comes through with a multi-phase new record, which is their longest and most ambitious yet. Uh, that is Once Twice Melody. 37, Smino, Love for Rent. 36, Autopsy Returns with uh, one of the most amazing death metal records of the year. That would be Morbidity Triumphant. Uh, Kilo Kish makes a full dive into the pop field on her latest full-length LP, American Girl. 34, it's Kendrick Lamar coming to us with a varied and wonderful meditation of an album, really kind of diving into his own personal thoughts around uh, trauma, growth, his art, the reception of that art, with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Number 33 is going to the legendary Screamo outfit Gospel, who came back with an incredible record after more than a decade of silence, The Loser. And at 32, it's FKA Twig's new mixtape, Capra Songs. Then at 31, it's Denzel Curry with Melt My Eyes, See Your Future, uh, with the incredible production and forward-thinking, uh, very introspective, self-searching tracks all over that LP. With number 30 is Kenny Beats with the instrumental tribute to his father, Louie, which is very colorful and well-produced, amazing little record. 29, one of my favorite hip-hop records of the year, that is uh, La Kelly, 47, with Shape Up. Very creative and cheeky little album over here. Number 28, it is Nas with King's Disease 3, killing it once again with Hit Boy on the bars and production. 27, it is SZA with the long-awaited SOS. This album was absolutely fantastic. Uh, one acoustic and sad, passionate bop after another on this one. And we round out the halfway point of the list with Pusha T's It's Almost Dry. Halfway, 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 25! Shout out to the band Cheek Face. Their left field, tongue-in-cheek, spoken word, indie rock stylings on the Too Much To Ask album. This one rocks, it rules, one of my favorite rock records of the year. Lots of personality, lots of humor and wit coming off this one. With number 24, it is the conceptual moving new album from Lupe Fiasco, Drill Music in Zion, where Lupe reflects on a host of different things, uh, from hip hop culture to the violence within it, to how it specifically impacts uh, neighborhoods like the one that he grew up in. With number 23, we have the new jockstrap record, I Love You Jennifer for B. One of the most varied, out there, and wildly produced and conceived albums of the year. Still not really sure what exactly uh, 
type of music I could say uh, jockstrap makes. I mean, obviously, uh, it, it's it's mostly pop in some way, shape, or form, but it covers so many weird experimental out there grounds that it's, it's difficult to pin down. But that's part of the fun and the appeal of this record, for sure. At number 22, we have the new Otoboke Beaver album, Super Champon. Really intense, speedy, and aggressive feminine punk album with lots of great riffs, refrains, and uh, topics laced into the lyrics. Really amazing to get another solid album from them. And at 21, uh, shout out to Spiritualized for their new full-length LP. This album is rich, it is beautiful, it is linear, it is entrancing. If you like your rock music sounding grand and syrupy and ornate and just uh, all-encompassing and enveloping, you are truly going to enjoy the beauty that this record has to offer. Now we head into number 20 with one of the most amazing and out there Latin records of the year, the new Meridian Brothers uh, album with uh, El Grupo Renacimiento, which uh, it's kind of a concept album and the group that they are collaborating with on the record isn't 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 really um uh, 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 real, but it does add to the creativity of the sound and the uh, very oddball lore of uh, the LP. Look, let me just say it this way. Uh, this this is completely unlike anything the band has done previously and anything of, uh, you're going to hear in the Latin field this year. It's a truly fun, unique record. You have to listen to it. Number 19, I think you also have to listen to this record. It is a hardcore punk album from Off titled LSD, uh, Free LSD that is, and it is packed with like elements of heavy psych. There's a lot of conspiracy theory and like alien uh, aliens uh, shit in the lyrics. <laughs> it is a wildly fun, heavy, intense, and rocking record that has a lot to say and really loving and enjoying this new phase for Off creatively. As they've been doing their thing for a minute and they've mostly stuck to their hardcore, plain hardcore punk roots, but now they're really switching it up in a great way. Number 18, we have Adeem the Artist with White Trash Revelry. Really one of the most refreshing country albums I've heard in a long, 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 long time. Uh, not just in terms of the variety of shades of country covered on the record, but just its messaging, its politics, its point of view. Production and songwriting are really quality as well. Uh, Deem is truly a one-of-a-kind artist, uh, and, and, and that is clear through listening to this album, and I hope that uh, we, we hear more from them in the future. Next at 17, it is Chat Pile with God's Country. If you love your sludge, if you love your noise rock, if you love your post-hardcore and you like it um, out there and aggressive and savage and loaded with some crazy off the wall lyrics, uh, man, you are not going to want to miss this record. This thing rules. This thing kicks ass. This is one of the hardest hitting uh, albums I've heard this year, not just in terms of volume, but the emotions going into it too. There are songs on this thing that break my heart. There are songs on this thing that put me in fucking panic mode. Chat Pile, God's Country, do not let this record slip by you. It's really great. Next, we have Billy Woods, Ethiopes. This thing is uh, really Billy kind of sinking his teeth pretty deeply into a lot of current trends with an abstract hip hop right now and absolutely killing it uh, in the process. The production choices on this thing are forward thinking, out there, and top notch. Uh, Billy is really at the top of his game, in my opinion, in terms of his reference game, in terms of his uh, passionate delivery that borders on spoken word. Really great features chosen for this record as well. Uh, just kind of seems like he's killing it creatively right now. Really awesome to see him grow in the way that he has since uh, earlier solo releases like History Will Absolve Me. And it just kind of seems like there's no ceiling for Billy right now. He's just going to keep putting out uh, heat every year. Now let's talk about number 15. That is going to be Beyonce with Renaissance. One of the most popular and talked about records of the year. I'm not sure if I can really add anything here that uh, hasn't been said a million times. But yeah, Beyonce going in a dance direction on this LP with great production, great writing, amazing and top-notch vocal performance and harmonic layering. And the record just features banger after banger after banger. Um, loved it. Thought it was fantastic. Uh, so have a lot of other people. That's why it's so high on the list. Let's go. Number 14, it's going to be the new Death's Dynamic Shroud album that is Dark Life. And uh, yeah, this thing is so creatively produced. It's mind-blowing, in fact. You don't run across albums that have such a wow factor, that have such a how-the-hell-did-this-even-happen factor to them, especially in this day and age. 
But this record truly does sound like it comes from another world, uh, and yet is so accessible, is so catchy in a lot of respects. If you guys like your weird internet niche electronic uh, music uh, with some vaporwave leanings in it here and there, you are not going to want to miss this one. It's incredible. Number 13, also one of the best punk records I have heard this year, comes from UK outfit Petrol Girls. A lot of snideness, a lot of irreverence on this record, a lot of radical politics, some amazing songs, refrains, group vocals too, performances are savage, the guitar riffs are sick as well. This thing is full of piss and vinegar and good politics, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Number 12, shout out to the new Ashenspire record, uh, Hostile Architecture. These guys are a Scottish band that I just ran across this year that uh, uh, has this, man, amazing fusion of post-rock and black metal, folk music and classical music. A lot of killer and hard-hitting statements in the lyrics as well on this one. Uh, this album really kind of spells out doom <laughs> for modern society and, uh, you know, does so with uh, a lot of uh, profundity and poignance and some incredibly intense performances as well. The progressions of these tracks are absolutely insane much of the time. The guitars, drums, vocals, uh, strings all come together sounding so epic, so over the top. Really gives everything the band is saying and, and trying to get across a sense of urgency, which only gets more intense uh, the more you actually read into to what is being said on the record, but uh, yeah, great album overall great record. Really hope the band's profile takes off after the release of this one. And at number 11, shout out to a very funky, poppy, but also thoughtful record from Charlotte Adigiri and Bullius Pupul. If you're looking for a record that approaches a lot of the absurdity of modern life and society in a kind of fun, cheeky way with a series of tracks that have this old school throwback dance and synth pop feel, yeah, you're going to want to listen to this one. Charlotte and Bullius make a great duo. Seems like they bounce off of each other creatively really well. The simple, groovy, and vintage aesthetics of a lot of the electronic music on this record are fantastic and just done so tastefully well. And Charlotte's vocals, her singing as well as her lyrics, just kind of are the cherry on top. They bring a lot of personality to the record, a lot of perspective, and just give these funky, quirky little anthems a sense of purpose. So yeah, highly recommend this one. It is equal parts of fun, hilarious, and entertaining. Smart, witty, and endlessly replayable too. Okay, top 10 time, top 10 time, top 10 time, top, 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 top. To tap, tim, tim, tap. Let's go at number 10. We have Silvana Estrada with Marchita. Yo, if you're looking for some Mexican, some fire, Latin, folk, my God, this thing is beautiful. This is gorgeous. The guitar work is so simple and wonderful. Uh, the arranged and extra instrumentation, when it does come in, because there's a lot of very skeletal tracks on this thing, uh, is so well placed and put together. This album is just mwah, mwah, mwah. pretty. It's endearing. It's heartwarming. It's sweet. It's just, it's just uh, uh, sweetness and just wonderful sparkles and loveliness on the ears. A powerhouse of emotion too. You are not going to want to miss this one. It's a, uh, it's, it's a heavy hitter. At number nine, we have a big fat new record from Big Thief. That would be Dragon, New Warm Mountain. I believe in you. Whew, what a big and versatile album from the band. But uh, yeah, this record kind of has a little bit of everything on it from abstract indieisms to just like straight up backwater folk with kind of a bluegrass twist to weird lo-fi experiments yeah this record really does it all and does 99.9 percent .9 of it uh, fantastically well great songwriting and performances on this thing overall production is very raw uh, adrian lenker's vocals are sounding more amazing than ever and her songwriting is uh, totally killing it as well what a big gratitude gratifying album from Big Thief and uh, handling my favorite record from them so far and uh, absolutely worthy of a top 10 spot. We also have a big passionate and versatile album at number eight too. That would be the New Sudan Archives record Natural Brown Prom Queen. Loving the fusions of art pop and Baroque pop and R&B and soul and hip hop on this thing. God, this album brings so much style and so many different sounds to the table and Sudan pretty much shows out in every way that she can on the 
this record from rapping to singing to producing and arranging. Very fun, beautiful, and unique record that you absolutely do need to check out if you haven't already. Number seven, we are going to give it to the new Black Country New Road album, Ants From Up There. What an emotional powerhouse this record is. I mean, the raw performances, the uh, very wide array of instrumentation going into this record. Black Country New Road has really like kind of reinvented uh, art rock in so many ways on this LP. And it's a shame because this record is such a creative triumph, uh, but also they, they, they lost their frontman Isaac shortly after the release of this album. And while the band uh, currently plans on moving forward creatively from here, uh, who knows what shape their sound or style or anything is going to take, especially with Isaac uh, being such a pivotal draw for the band on records and songs up until this point. I've spilled a lot of guts over this album. A lot of people across the internet have spilled guts over this album. If you're into any kind of underground rock, this record has really kind of been like, you know, the the the, the bee's knees of the year, the album that has been drawing uh, the most attention. And for good reason. It is so incredibly passionate and well-written and performed and also just arranged and composed. Like, the progressions of these tracks are really incredible. What a dynamic album. All I can say is hope Hopefully this is like not the end we hear of uh, great moments from this band, even with uh, such a radical change having hit immediately after the release of this album. From here at number six, shout out to Conway the Machine with God Don't Make Mistakes. This album for Conway has been a long time coming and I am happy to report uh, with it landing in the top 10 here that it was very much well worth the wait. The gritty cuts on this record are amazing. The more personal cuts where he's diving into his own personal stresses and traumas and so on and so forth are hard hitting, maybe even more hard hitting, honestly, because Conway is like opening up on this record in a way that he just hasn't before. And as a result, I think he's brought a certain level of depth we haven't heard on a lot of hip hop records this year. Production choices on this thing are great. Uh, feature choices are fantastic too. Again, amazing album. Long live Conway the Machine. Number five, we have one of the most insane, colorful, and theatrical rock records of the year. That is uh, the new Black Midi Project Hellfire. Man, I'm so happy I knew that the band was going to do even better on a following album with, with, their, with their last LP. They, they did. They bested their last LP with this one over here quite handily. The performances on this thing are so insane and just, uh, just everything on this record. When it's not just bashing you over the head with these incredible cathartic passages of guitars and drums and uh, quirky spoken word vocals. It is instead hitting you with these high drama moments of pure beauty that uh, are frankly stunning like on the closer. Really one of the most creative albums in this genre in this field uh, that we are going to hear this year but also for a long time. Number four, let's go with my hardcore punk pick of the year that would be Soul Glow with uh, Diaspora Problems. Most intense and insane punk records I've heard in a long time but also so, uh, simultaneously jumping into the lyrics of the record, uh, it's a very thoughtful, dense album, a very verbose album. This is not just some dumb, fast, super aggressive uh, expression of anger. This is a record that really kind of gets the gears turning, as the band not just explores the economics behind a reselling clothing, but uh, also generational trauma, mental health issues, as, as well as like drama and fights and uh, uh, petty disagreements between friends. Yeah, killer record, soul Glow is also the truth and totally killed it this year and uh, looking forward to hearing more from them. Number three, I'm going to give it to those Viagra boys on Cave World, the band's most fun, groovy, and entertaining batch of tracks, yet really taking that scuzzy, low-down, disgusting, filthy, dirtbag post-punk vibe to a new creative peak, while also exploring across the record conceptually uh, the dysfunctions of the human race and how that plays out into greater problems in society. So don't just take this album as some kind of like surface level thrill. I do think it is getting across some of the most essential points I've heard any album bring to the table this year. Which I can also say for the record at our number two spot, that would be Jid with the Forever Story. Yeah, this thing rules, holy shit. Awesome album, amazing album. I mean, we already knew Jid was a top-notch lyricist and a uh, flow machine, but uh, he really came through on this record. Impressed big time, very much worth the wait. Production choices are great, feature choices are great. He's really doing Dreamville a service, uh, dropping an album this amazing. And it's also great that he's able to kind of get across his thoughts and feelings on a variety of personal and social issues on 
the record and also kind of look at that through like a larger perspective and lens uh, when it comes to these issues having been dealt with within this very art form in the past and sort of, you know, looking at that as kind of this never ending cycle. In a way, it becomes almost like a meta commentary for a rapper at his level of skill or expertise to also be like, you know, pressured or expected to put forward some album or piece of work that is also socially conscious or trying to connect to something bigger than itself or solve some problem that, you know, frankly, musicians shouldn't be expected to solve. But still, Jid does come through with a lot of poignant commentary on this LP that is uh, incredibly valuable, and he gets it across with great performances and some really creative pen game, too. He's really set a high bar for himself on this one, and it's going to be interesting to see how creatively he continues from here with a, a record of this caliber under his belt. And at my number one spot, we are going to put uh, De Todas Las Flores from Natalia Laforcade. Yep, that's the number one. There we go. This record is pure, stunning, unfiltered, unadulterated beauty, no more, no less. And every time I listen to it, I am impressed with its nuances, its details, its sensuality, the, the fact that it just flows so naturally and organically from cut to cut to cut, even with such heavy arrangements following a lot of these tracks, and the seamless way that Natalia and her band uh, fuse together elements of folk and singer-songwriter music, jazz music, uh, Latin music, chamber music, little touches of classical here and there. This is an album that brings a lot of class to the table, but does so in a way that doesn't feel super snooty or like it has its head up its ass. And of course, song for song for song, the record is just absolutely fire, whether we're talking about the most low-key ballad or the most fiery dance floor cut. Natalia just shows incredible skill and range on this record in terms of her writing and vocal performances. Uh, the band that she has backing her on this record, absolutely incredible. I've had issues in the past with her music maybe sounding a little too cleanly produced or a little too over arranged. Uh, this record brings all the richness of instrumentation that she has been working with on some recent releases, but it just feels so much more um, organic, more just kind of raw, more authentic. You know, not so touched up that it feels like it's coming out of a Disney soundtrack or something. Yeah, I had to give this album number one. It's just at another fucking level, and uh, I, I can't stand it. It's just amazing. And I am going to leave it there, I think. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. It's my top 50 for the year. Albums. Yep. Yep. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mwah. Tran? Zishin, have you given these albums a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Uh, this week, it's over. God, it's over. I'm so, so glad it's over. Yeah, it's, it's over. It's over. Yeah, it's good. It's good that it's over. Next to my head, video. Check out. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. 2020. See you guys next year. Forever.